This is Sheila's Take, a podcast where you can hear my take on everything. Love, hate, relationships, family, and today's issues with a godly perspective. I'm your host, Sheila Dunbar. Thank you for joining me. Well, hello. Welcome to Sheila's Take. I am thrilled to introduce our special guest, uh, Miss Phoebe Trotman. Phoebe is the inspiring author of Never Quit on a Bad Day. And that's a powerful book that guides readers to overcome adversity and embrace a tenacious spirit. Um, With a personal journey filled with ups and downs, Phoebe knows firsthand the challenges life can throw our way. Her unwavering determination and refusal to give up on her dreams serve as a beacon of hope for anyone who faces hardships. Um, Throughout today's episode, we're going to discuss Phoebe's experiences explore how she found the strength to keep pushing forward and not quit, even on the worst of her of her days. But Phoebe is not just an author, she's also a former soccer player, a co-quitlam Hall of Famer, and she is an advocate for resilience and inspiration. Her story has the power to touch hearts, to motivate minds, and to encourage us to face difficulties head on. So without further ado, let's dive into this enlightening conversation with Phoebe and discover the key to never quitting on a bad day. Welcome, Phoebe. Thank you so much, Sheila. It is such an honor and pleasure to be with you today. I've been looking forward to this conversation. So thank you so much for having me. You and me both. So um, I just wanted to, when I when I uh, talked to you earlier, uh, early in the week, last week, we c- talked about a certain things, and I enjoyed your journey and and your 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 resilience and your never quitting on the bad day. And one of the things um, in your book that I, when I started reading it, I I it 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 caught me. And this is one of the things I have an affirmation that I say every morning. And one of the things in the affirmation is Jeremiah 29 and 11. And it's, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. And I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I, you know, so uh, that that's like, that's my standing scripture that, that I read, that I, that, that, that I literally base my life on because I know that there's plans for us and Mm -hmm. no matter on our worst days our best days whatever days it is we move forward and we got we we got to get through those days so can you just share a little bit about your personal journey and how it inspired you to write never quit on a bad day Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you start your day with affirmations and that verse. I mean, I just hang on to that for dear life because um, it's, it's powerful. It really is powerful and it provides you with hope. Right. And I think that's what's so important for when you're going through a challenging time is just looking for that bright light and and holding on to something. And we can chat, you know, more about that. Um, But yeah, my journey, you know, what it's been an interesting one. I started off playing soccer at five. I started off playing an all boys team. I was the only little girl of color um, on an all Caucasian boys team and I just I love the sport my older brother played and so I asked my parents if I could play and I don't know if the team was supposed to be co-ed and it ended up I was the only little girl. I'm not sure if it was a boys team. I, I don't even know. Anyways, but that was my start. But they, they were great. I was used to playing with boys because of my older brother and older mm-hmm. cousins. And so I just started playing. I fell in love with the sport. I've had an incredible career as an athlete in terms of a soccer player. And you know what? It's been an amazing journey. I'm so grateful because I learned so many life lessons on the soccer field that have served me well in life as well as as an entrepreneur. And really, you know, you mentioned the Coquitlam Sports Hall of Fame and it was in that there was an interview and this was last year there was an interview where the interviewer asked me you know what has sport given me and I shared you know so many life lessons that I've learned on the soccer field like teamwork and 
dedication and commitment and accountability, you know, those are just some of the life wow. skills. And I said, you know, I've had incredible highlights in terms of national championships. Like I've been fortunate to win national championships on all levels that I've played at. I've won a lot of personal accolades as well too. MVPs, you know, all American player of the game, player of the year, different awards. And I shared, you know what, it's been incredible. And I said, the only reason though, that I was able to have those highs, those national championships and those personal accolades are because of the tough stuff, the not getting, making a team, the sitting on the bench, the, yeah. you know, not even dressing for a game, you know, like all those pieces of it. Just the other day, yeah. I found um, a scrapbook my mom had prepared for me and I was flipping through it and I saw an article and it's funny because I, I read that article and I didn't even remember, but in the article, I talked about not even dressing for a game, literally watching the game from a VIP section. Wow. And, and I joked about it because the next, the game that I played, the next game I played very very well and you know scored a couple goals and so and I said in that article which I didn't even remember till I read it was that I said you know what yeah this is a great place to to watch the game if you're not a player but if you're a player you want to be on that field exactly. and it was all those things pushing through when I wasn't getting you know what I wanted at the time persevering through it taking responsibility and being like what can I do it to be a better player so that when I do get that opportunity to play I'm going to show them you know my stuff kind of thing and so um that has just been something that I've ha I've done throughout life and again it's kind of served me well and, and that really was the inspiration behind the book never quit on a bad day wow 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 as a former soccer player uh can you discuss any specific instances in your sport career that required you to um, embody the principles you discuss in the book? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I remember there was um, one team that I went out for as a provincial team and I didn't even really know what it was, but a bunch of teammates and other adult coaches were like, you should go for this. You know, you'll totally make the team, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, sure. So went through this trial process in that um, I actually ended up playing a position that I was not, I'm, I'm more attacking minded. I like to be mm -hmm. up front. I like to score goals. Um, but the coach of that team thought I was a defender and thought I should play defense. And I didn't adapt well to it. I just, I didn't play well. I really didn't know what it really, what I was doing and, you know, didn't have a good performance. And I ended up not making it past that first round. And I was devastated. I remember just crying and crying and crying and crying. And I was so upset because, you know, I thought I was a player and I was surprised that I didn't even make it. And then a couple of my teammates, they made it one who absolutely deserved to be there. This other one where it was kind of like, wait, what? How did she made it? And you didn't. And there was all this confusion and that didn't help. That just made me cry even more. Um, and it kind of came to a point where my parents were like, okay, well, what do you want to do about this? Like, you can just keep crying and crying and crying, but is that getting you to what you want and what do you want do you want to keep playing do you not want to play and you know I wanted to keep playing and so then it was that conversation and I was I was either 13 14 15 like somewhere in that age where um it was one of those things well what do you want to do and I was like I want to play and so then I had to take accountability well how can I be a better player what can I do to be better practicing and you know from that moment after that it was a situation where I knew going forward that I was going to make sure that I was a player who was impacting games, who was contributing that if when I went out for a tryout that I would be the player that they'd be like, yes, we want Phoebe Trotman on your team. And so it was really, uh, you know, looking back on it, it was horrible <laughs> going through it. However, it has served me well in my life because right. it made me really, you know, learn to start taking accountability for what I can control. You know, I couldn't mm -hmm. change that coach's mind then, but I could become a top player by doing what I could do so that in going forward, I would be, you know, an impact player. Impact player. That That's, that's great because a lot of times you, you're right. We can't, we, we know we can't change someone else's mind, but we can only do, and we, we know what we can do and we can do better or mm -hmm put our best foot forward so that, you know, when, it, when the time comes around again, Hey, you know, we're that, we're that choice. We're that time there. Absolutely. Cause a lot of times they do think, you know, we were quick to, especially in the whole theme of never quitting a bad day. And just in general, we, you know, a lot of times that we're quick to point fingers at someone else. Right. And it's like, well, that's not fair. Looking back on the situation, right. that's not fair. I shouldn't have been played in that position or that's not fair. I should have made the team anyways, or that's not fair, but it doesn't serve anyone. All that does is I find that keeps us in that place when all we're doing is blaming outward. Mm -hmm. It keeps us in that low place of frustration. Right. And it might not be fair. Let's face it. There's a lot of stuff that happens. that isn't fair. We just 
have to decide how are we going to deal with it? Because at the end of the day, we can only control our own emotions and our emotions are going to control what our actions are going to be next. Exactly. Exactly. You know, we have, and we have to adjust. (laughs) We do. We do. We, We definitely have to adjust. Um, and never quit a bad day. You discuss the importance of a positive mindset, right? How do you suggest readers cultivate that mindset, especially during difficult times? Yeah. So I think one of the biggest things to do is gratitude, right? Gratitude helps with creating a positive mindset because when you can find something to be grateful for, and sometimes when it is a tough situation, it's going to be challenging and it might not be finding gratitude in that situation over here. It might be finding something to be grateful for in another situation Mm -hmm. in your life over here. Right. But when we can find um, things to be grateful for gratitude shifts our perspective, right? It doesn't minimize what we're going through. It doesn't take away what we're going through. It just shifts our perspective to allow us to have something else to focus on that's positive, right? It's very challenging to be grateful and angry at the same time, right? It's not an emotion to be able to do the same. So when you can find that something to be grateful for, and again, maybe it's not gratitude in the situation, might be gratitude for something else over here, but it shifts it and it gives you a little bit of a change of perspective. And then sometimes within that change of perspective, we can have clarity as to how we're going to deal with whatever we're going through, right? So it just gives us a little bit of a shift in that moment. And sometimes that's all we need to look at a situation differently. And sometimes it's a matter of learning from that situation, right? And gratitude can help us learn from whatever we're going through. Right. Oh, that's good. That's true. You know, um, I noticed uh, one of the things um, I'm, I'm with a group of women that I'm, that I'm, um, you know, I share with you that I'm, we're doing a, a, uh, I, I went through a, a kind of transformation myself this you year, did, and, which is amazing, uh, and and so forth. And I'm working with a group of women, and we're you know uh, we're doing a 21 day challenge uh, for the month of November, and every day we're we're doing an exercise, and then we're writing why what we're grateful for every mm-hmm. day, you know, and you don't realize the little things that you, you are grateful for how we, you know, people who, who we have cars and, you know, people who don't have cars and people who have jobs. And, you know, some people complain, Oh, I got to get up and go to this job every day, but, you know, thank God that I, Oh, you know, I'm grateful to have a job to get up and go to, I have this. Absolutely. So being grateful does change your your perspective a lot. And like you said, you can't be angry and be grateful at the same time. It's it's definitely gonna, you know, something's gonna shift. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. But uh, failure is inevitable, right? As part of life. How do you address the fear of failure and encourage your readers or uh, my listeners to embrace it as a stepping stone towards success? Well, I think that's a, that's the key right there is to embrace it as a stepping stone to success, to realize it's not like success is here and failures here. So if you went this way, like you're moving further and further from success, it's, it's not that they're on opposite ends of the spectrum. One is on the way to the other one and vice versa, you might hit success and then keep going. And then there might be a failure of some sort in what you're doing and then keep going. Like it's all part of a process. It's all part of a journey. And I think when we start realizing to take what we can learn from that failure, if that's the word we want to use Mm -hmm. from it, then is it truly a failure? Right? Like if we can really look at what happened as, okay, that soccer team, I did not make that team, right? That can be seen as a failure. That being said, what did I learn from it? Well, I learned how to get back up when I was very, very devastated. Mm -hmm. I learned how to take accountability and realize like, oh, wow, I didn't play well at that position. Like mentally being put in another position kind of threw me. How do I learn to grow through that? You know, adjusting and learning from it. Does that mean it's it's a failure or was it something that helped me in the long run? And I think that's something that if we can start um, shifting our perspective around Mm -hmm. that and realizing that we can learn from any type of situation, everything we go through, we can learn something from it. And if we start to take what we can learn from it, be grateful for what we learn from it. Again, maybe not the experience. We're not maybe not grateful for what happened, but grateful for the lesson that came out of what that was Mm -hmm. to take forward, to help us be better, learn, grow, and do better the next time. 
exactly and 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 i agree with that because again you, you know failures are going to failures are going to happen and it's how you're going to deal with it are you going to sit back and say okay well you know what i i tried this business plan and it didn't work so i'm i'm done mm -hmm. <laughs> you know are you going to say well what what happened with this business plan that it didn't work and let me learn from it and change it up and do something different you know exactly um, exactly and 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 I think that's that's where um, sometimes people don't realize it, or, or 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 some you know a lot of people who have great ideas and 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 great um, businesses, but sometimes they don't go the way they want, and they're like, okay, well, um, it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. Um, positive people, I I feel even having positive influences around you, you know can help also, you know, with, with absolutely, you know, but can you share some, um, actionable techniques or exercises that readers can implement to build and nourish these support networks in their personal and professional lives? Yeah, absolutely. So one thing I always encourage people to, and I've done this for years, mm -hmm. I literally have in my phone at 9, 10 PM Pacific every single day. It's an appointment with myself mm -hmm. and it just pops off of my calendar and says, I am so happy and grateful that, and wow. that's it. That's, that's the meeting. That's what pops up. And the reason I do that is because if I, I mean, now gratitude is just part of what I do, mm -hmm. but back then when I started that, it wasn't something that I was consistent at, if you will. And so I put that in place so that every single day, I mean, now I start my day in gratitude. I am my day in gratitude. I'm grateful at moments throughout the day. However, that, that I keep that reminder on my phone because in that moment at 9, 10 PM Pacific, usually I'm at home or I might be, you know, I'm somewhere where I'm kind of in a relaxing environment for the most part of that time. So I can have that quick minute. Sometimes it's a minute. Sometimes it's three minutes where I just take a moment and I'm like, what am I so happy and grateful for that in this moment? Like, what is it right now? And I just have a quick moment of gratitude. And so I encourage people to do that. Choose whatever time makes the most sense for you. When you, most of the time, you'll be somewhere where you'll be able to, you know, look at it. It'll, it'll just, again, that quick state, change of state, because you look at it, you're like, huh, what am I grateful for? Wonderful. So that would be one thing I would definitely encourage um, listeners to do and readers we talk about in the book the other thing and um if every listeners can go to my website so mm -hmm. never quit on a bad day.com put in your email address you get a free chapter from the book and the reason i say this particular chapter is at the end we talk about language we talk about success oriented language mm -hmm. and so just one quick example is how many times do people say i'm going to try and do that or i'll try that that's yes. like people say that all the time it's so Try is one of those words, we're going to call it a weak word because it gives you an out, right? We're not talking about food. I'm going to try and, you know, I'm going to try octopus today or whatever that is. We're not, we're not talking about it in that way. We're talking about it in the sense of, of your actual doing something. Right. And I love this because one of my favorite quotes is by Yoda. There is no try only do or do not. Mm -hmm. And so even just taking the word try out of your vocabulary, replace it with do or not, do not like remove that word. Cause even think about this, Sheila, how many times have you had a friend? Oh, I'll, I'll try and swing by. The moment they say that you're like, you're not coming over later. Let's be honest. Like it is just that open Phoebe, that is my favorite. Word. That is my favorite word because it does. It gives you the. 100%. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. So it's not a commitment. It's like okay, I'm I'm I, I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna try. But that is my favorite. I, I use that word all the time. Oh, absolutely. A lot of people do. And what I I just made this conscious. Of, I'm not using that word unless it has to do with like a food. Like if someone's like, "Well, we try this food." Right. Okay. But even that I'm not really trying it. I'm eating it. Right. Like I'm, exactly. I'm experiencing it. But um, in terms of that, like just sticking through. So for, for me, something was really big was like, look, I'm removing that word. So if you invite me somewhere and I say, okay, Sheila, I will be there. I want the people in my network to know that I'm going to be there. If I do not show up, then, you know, something unfortunately happened because I, I gave you that word. And so I just removed, I'm going to try to try to be there. I'm going to try my business. I'm going to try and make five phone calls today. Well, as soon as you say that you're giving yourself a bit of an out and going, well, I'm going to try and make cold right. calls today. Well, you it's, you're right away, right? You're giving yourself that out versus 
I am making five phone calls today for my business. Very different statements, right? So, and in that chapter that I mentioned, uh, there's a there's several words that we go through. That was just one example. And I encourage people to just do that. Start with one word. Just start with one word. Remove try. And when and you, it's so funny when you do this and you start hearing people say try, you're just like, mm-hmm, okay. Gonna, you know what? I'm gonna okay. do, I'm gonna do that starting. This week, I'm going to do that. I'm going to move try out of my out of my uh, vocabulary, or you know, and I'm going to say either yes or no. I'm going to do it, or I'm not going to do it. Yeah, do it because that it, you're right. Because that's that's my out. Like if I say I've tried, I'm like, okay, well, I said I tried. I didn't say I was going to. You know, I'm going to give it a try. <laughs> yeah, but it's that it is that out, right? And so that's just one thing that I tell you. Know what? Like our language is so powerful, and what we say to ourselves, even what we're thinking, of course, right? But especially in terms of that business, like how many times people say, "Well, I'm going to try and do a new business." Well, right there, you've already like you're you're not setting yourself up for success, right? Yeah. So um that would be another thing is is your language. So I encourage everyone go to the website, get that free chapter. At the end of the chapter, you'll see it's a table where we talk about the language. And uh that's just one you can start with is try and just you know, I'd love to hear from people just how they, how now that they, you know this, it's gonna be so interesting when people say stuff like that to you. You're gonna be like, Oh, sure, okay, <laughs> yep, see you later, you know, and just you let it go. Well, there were two, there's two things um, that I, I'm working on. Uh, one, till the end of the year, not saying anything, any idle words or anything negative. And now I'm going to add not using the word try. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And then awesome. that those are the three things I'm going to do. I'm going to start doing now. Um Support networks are crucial during challenging times. How do you advise uh, readers to build and nourish these support networks in their personal and professional lives? Absolutely. Yeah. So we do talk about that in the book because that was huge for me and has been throughout kind of my journey in terms of being around positive, uplifting people and being intentional about it. And so I encourage people to pour into people who are those type of people for you. Like who are those people who, you know, in, in, in the book, we do an exercise at the end of one of the chapters where we talk about who are the personal, your personal support network and who are your professional Mm -hmm. support network. And the reason I break it up into two is because sometimes the people who you would go to when you're going through something personally may not be the same people you go to if you're going through something professionally and vice versa. And the reason I use this example is I have some incredible friends who are like rock solid. They've got my back. They are amazing and incredible. If I was going through something on the professional side, then some of them aren't business owners. Mm -hmm. So they're not quite understanding some of the business challenges that I might be going through over here. And so by going over to this group and saying, Hey, this is what's happening. Some of them may be like, you know what? They're right. That isn't fair. That's not cool. Don't do it. Tell them you're out you know, and they have my back in that way. But is that the advice that I need to hear in that moment? Not necessarily. Whereas someone in the professional realm might be like, you know what, you're right. It isn't fair, but you know who you are. You know what you're capable of doing, go out there and show them. And so it's just important to, again, surround yourself with great people. Be that person though. You have to be that person first, right? You have to be the person you're looking to attract in the sense of, are you someone who's there when your friends are going through challenges? Are you someone who can uplift? You know, you yourself have to be a full person to be able to pour out into other people. And so it's important to make sure that you're full, you're doing what you need to do by reaching out to people. I encourage people every single day, just reach out to someone and let them know you appreciate them. Mm -hmm. Let them know you're grateful for them. You know, you want to say pour into your network. So your network will be there and pour into you when you need them as well too. And so um, being intentional, looking for, great people, people who have lifestyles that, you know, you would like to have something similar can, you know, go to places that have typically positive people, you know, whether it's through church, whether it's through business groups, whether it's community activities, you know, again, being an athlete, soccer player, naturally I've been around a lot of athletes and athletes have certain mindset, right? They're very focused, goal oriented. 
Right. And I'm grateful for that. Right. So maybe it's a hobby. Maybe you're around people who love a similar hobby as you. And it's just finding groups of people who you connect with, who also share similar values as you, similar outlooks. You can tell a lot from people when you're around them, right? Like, are they complaining about the weather or are they like, you know what? Yep. It's raining, but this is where we live. Let me layer up and let's go. You know, you can, when things happen, you can tell a lot about people and then it's just choosing who do you want to surround yourself with? Yeah. And, and I, and that's very important because who you surround yourself with a lot of times that's going to rub off on you. Mm -hmm. So if you're around positive people, that, that positive energy, that's going to rub off on you. If you were around people who are Debbie Downers, who don't really, you know, don't really have um, the same motivation that you have and the same uh, like-minded that you have, it's, it's, you're not good. It's not going to be well for you. you you're going to, you're going to, you're going to, they're going to rub off on you. So yeah. I've noticed that in, in my, in my life also, um, there's a lot of people that I may have to, ha- I may have to have, I wouldn't, got, I'm not going to say let go, but sometimes you have to let them go so that you can move on. You know, absolutely. And it's, and it's, you still can love, you love them. It just doesn't mean you're on the same path right now. You never know. You may cross paths again. One simple way that um, your listeners and viewers can do, do a phone test. Okay. So when your phone rings (laughs) and you see that person's name pop up, are you like, Sheila, what's up? (laughs) Are you like that? Or are you like, you know, I'm going to talk to Bob a little bit later, right? Like that yeah. is one way. How does your energy feel when you see yeah. that name pop up? And here's the reality accountability gut check. When you call someone, what do you think their reaction is? Are they going to be like, yeah, it's Phoebe calling. What's up? Or are they like, eh, yeah. you know, <laughs> and that's a, again, and that's something we have to, we kind of have to evaluate ourselves, right? What kind of energy are we bringing to our network? Is, are we the, someone who's lifting people up or are we someone who's bringing people down? And if we are the one right now who's bringing someone down and you, you know that, well, guess what? You can change, change. right? Start yeah. listening to more positive things. Start reading more positive, turn off the news at night, start mm-hmm. reading things of gratitude and inspiration and, and encouragement and when you start filling yourself with that, it will start to come out. So they, it's it's something where if you feel like you are more of a person who seems to feel a little bit more pessimistic, a little bit more on the complaining, a little bit more of the negative draining energy, that's okay. Acknowledge it. And just how can you move forward and and, and shift that into something more positive? Right. Yeah, the, I, I agree. I agree. Um, hold on. Um, what do you hope readers will take away from reading Never Quit on the Bad Day? My goal with the book is that readers will, well, they'll complete. So at the end of every chapter, for those of you who are just listening in, the end of every chapter is a section called Reflections on Resilience. Mm -hmm. So my goal for when people read the book is yes, you're going to read a short story. You're going to feel uplifted and encouraged. That being said, what I'm most excited about is for the readers who go through the reflections on resilience exercise and really dig deep with them because they're designed to help you move forward in your life, whether it's to figure out what's one dream that you've always had and what's one action you can do to move yourself closer to that. That excites me when readers tell me, hey, I, you know what? I, I realized I haven't been dreaming and here's one thing I want to do. I love that. Whether it's language and someone, you know, takes that chart of success language and they're like, okay, I'm, I've shifted how I speak to myself and how I, what I think about perspective. So I'm excited for readers to walk away with a brighter outlook and to take action in their own lives. That's really what it's about. Cause I love to read. Like you have a bookshelf behind me. There's one over here. Like I love to read and I enjoy books and the books that I connect with the most is when I can leave from that book and implement something in my own life. That's going to help me move forward. And that's my goal with never quit on a bad day is when readers read it, that they get something out of it that can help them move forward, whether it's something about gratitude, perspective, mm-hmm. their own belief, their language, dream building, um, being able to focus, being able to, you know, put away some of the, you know, be able to like remember who they are, even when they are faced with criticism and negativity from other people, they know, hey, you know what? I'm unique. I was made for 
for something and they can and walk away with that kind of posture and confidence, that excites me the most. Are there any upcoming projects or initiatives that you are currently working on that you would like to share with uh, with, with my listeners? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm starting on the next book. So it's yes. interesting because last year, this time it was like, if someone said you're going to write a book, I would have been like, eh, probably not. <laughs> um, and here we are with one book, a workbook as well. And now starting on the second book and and never quit on Bad Jay. The vision is it will be a series. And so uh, starting right now on, on working on the next book in the series and very, very excited about that too. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait for that. Um, I'm reading through, I'm, I, I'm on page uh, 60 right now of, of uh, Never Quit on a Bad Day. So I'm yeah. reading, I am reading it. Um, but lastly, um, as, as someone who has faced numerous uh, setbacks and triumph over adversity, what advice would you give to individuals currently struggling you know, to stay motivated and persevere, persevere, sorry. Yeah, no, one thing I always encourage people to do, I, I talk about it a little bit in the book. It's an exercise that I call my dream day. And essentially what it is, is this is a super short version, but from the moment you open your eyes in the morning to the moment you close your eyes at night, write down your dream day and think about it from a standpoint of who do you see? What activities do you enjoy? How do you feel physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially? Do you have a business? Do you have a job you love? Like, what do you do on that dream day? The key is to get into the, the feeling of it, really feel those emotions of experiencing your dream day and write it down in the present tense. The reason I encourage people to do this is I remember going through this act activity similar to this one uh, many, many years ago when I was not living my dream day. I didn't even feel like I was like, how am I going to get there? So I had to stretch myself. However, it was such a powerful exercise because it just keeps you fo during those tough times. You're like, keep going, focus on my dream day, focus on my dream day. And I actually created a workbook all around that. And on it, there's a picture of a lighthouse. And the reason I put that is there, because when you're going through those tough times, having something to focus on, to move you forward, to give you that clarity it pulls you. And so I encourage people, even, even if you're going through a tough time, what brings you joy, get a pen and paper, you can, or you can grab the workbook online. It's available on Amazon and just start writing and really have, get into the feeling right in present tense. And it's exciting because even if you're not there yet, it gives you something to move forward towards. And so I just, and I encourage people to keep going, keep going, know that bumps will happen. It's how do you move over them and just keep moving forward and, and greatness is on the other side when you keep pushing through. That's right. That's right. Uh, Phoebe, I thank you so much for being a guest on my show, on my podcast. I appreciate you. I encourage everyone to go out and get Never quit on a bad day. And that's what's your website again? Uh, can you just tell everyone? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, very simple. Never quit on a bad day dot com. So <laughs> yeah, I like to keep it simple. Yes. Yeah, so please reach out to Phoebe and definitely uh, get the book because it's it's really a good book and it has a lot of interesting uh, stories and it's it's really amazing. And, and I, I appreciate you, Phoebe. I thank you for taking the time. And I, you know, I just wish the best for you. And I'm, I can't wait for that new book to come out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sheila. Thank you so much for having me on. And congratulations on all your success and Thank stepping you. forward. It just is so inspiring. So keep sharing and keep shining. Definitely. Thank you so much. Take care. Join me next time where I will continue to discuss more of today's issues. You can hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube or email me at sheila's hyphen take at outlook.com for topics you would like to discuss or if you would like to be a guest on Sheila's Take. I am your host, Sheila Dunbar. Blessings to you.